Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a TKL from Keymove. It is the Keymove K87, but this is the 1980s edition or 1980. Um, I don't know much about it, but I, I'm guessing it's probably a little retro. The box is very significant, quite heavy. So um, Keymove sent me out this keyboard for review. I've reviewed another one of their keyboards. I want to say the model was the K68. Quite an interesting keyboard because the way it was designed, it looked like a low profile keyboard and it used low profile keys. But because of its sunken design and really low height, um, it actually used normal size switches. So it's like a kind of like a cheat, but it works because it's so low. And they basically put the PCB low, and I, I've got that on my list to mod. I just haven't gotten to it, um, but I do need to because it is an interesting little keyboard. Also has like a perimeter lighting. So, um, but today we're taking a look at this new one from Keymove. It's the K87, and it's a TKL, which I enjoy. It uh, it is a three mode keyboard, and looks like we are loaded with red switches. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got. Before we get to the keyboard, uh, let's see what we've got in the box. It looks like we have a user card. Um, it has the Chinese and then English below it. Placeable 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Control temperature. Controlled battery. Okay. We also have wrapped in a good amount of PE foam. Oh, oh that's nice because it's got it's curved. But it's a... Um, Branded key move, switch and keycap puller. Oh, these are interesting. Oh, and they're strong. Well, I'm going to give this a shot. I always like me a new key switch puller. And here we have a rubberized USB A to USB C cable. Um, got colored. Usually when it has color, it's USB 3, but um, I'll have to test it and see. Got a nice little uh, rubberized key tag or tail to keep it together. And I do like the ends. They have a nice texture to them. It's actually pretty nice and they ha they are branded. Not a decent cable. And here we are with the Keymove 1980K87 and I gotta say this is an interesting design. It's one of those ones that just jump out at me right at first. Um, they've got some almost SA like keycaps the blue, I love this blue, but I'm partial to blue. And this is looks very similar to, I believe, the Apollo colorway. Um, we've got some really nice big legends, which wins me over right away. Um, then we have some sub-legends on the side or front of the keycaps showing us the different functionality. Uh, that's nice. Now let me see what kind of keycaps are we dealing with here. All right, these are double shot, and they, if they're not SA, they're one of the SA family. They're, they're, they've got to be SA. So we got keycaps that are 1.5 millimeter double shot PBT. So that's not bad at all. Let's check out these stabilizers. Seem to be the newer ones. And they are a little bit loose, but because I think they're better material, These are much better tuned. We have a steel plate, huh? Well, I mean, I guess that's part of the weight that's in here because this thing is heavy, but I'm going to guess some of it is the mat. I'm honestly surprised that it's not pingier. Being that it's a, a steel plate. Yeah, I mean, these aren't going to bend out of shape real quick. I gotta say, I like these. So we have we do have a north facing three and five pin compatible PCB. And I can see the layer of I forgot what it was between the plate and the PCB. Oh, they're key move branded. And they do have a light diffuser built into them. That's really it looks like one of the like a headlight, the front of a headlight. It's probably gonna be a really nice diffuser. Now let's check out these stabilizers a little closer. They would unlock for me. Oh. Lock it from the right side, I guess. 
yeah, these are definitely the newer stabilizers. I think they're made out of palm. And they're lubricated just enough inside of the uh, stem housing. But it doesn't look like there's any on the elbows on the wire. Huh. Surprisingly, they sound good. And on the PCB, it does not look like we have the ability for screwing stabilizers, unfortunately. But being that this is a steel plate, we'd have to come up with a whole different plate anyway, because this is not going to uh, be amenable to switches below it. And I don't think it's going to have enough space or clearance. And these red switches feel like red switches, but there's no pin. So I'm going to assume that the switches are pre lubed since there's no ping whatsoever. I gotta say, so far I'm impressed. Now, like I said, it is quite substantial. Um, oh, let's uh, check out the bottom here. So here we have the uh, mode switches. I prefer them to be somewhere else other than the bottom, but most people aren't gonna be switching on and off all the time. And it's not like it's, you know, too much harder just to lift it up and do the switch, especially if you've got it memorized. So we got Win and Mac physical switch good job and we've got bluetooth usb and 2.4 i'm interested here about this battery yeah and there we are with a 4000 milliamp hour removable battery huh i gotta say that's pretty cool we got the model numbers on there i mean obviously we could get the dimension so i'm sure we could pick one up Sure, we could pick up bat replacement batteries on Amazon or AliExpress. And I, I gotta say, I like the, um, the textures, the lines, um, and even their logo. They don't like throw it on your face in front, but it's there at the bottom, so you know who made it. Oh, well, I guess we have a badge here, but that's actually done in, in good good taste, I would say. I like it because it's kind of subdued. It's not like, look at me. Right, let's plug it in and see what these RGB looks like, especially this really cool corner one. So, yeah, we do have a, well, it's mainly a front RGB, but it does go off to the side a little bit. So I'm going to guess that's a, well, charging indicator since it's next to a battery. We've got a mode light and a caps light and the scroll lock doesn't care. <laughs> so for a steel plate keyboard, I got to say the, the typing feel is actually not bad. I mean, it is a tray mount, you can tell, but it it's not as harsh as, as usual when I'm trying to figure out why exactly because it's not like it has any flex whatsoever it is um it lists for about 85 dollars which it's hard comparing to others in the market mm, but because it doesn't have gasket mount like that's the one thing that i know that's kind of given some pushback because most people prefer the gas amount. Now, I I actually, I could use this. I don't have a problem. And I, I believe that there's others like me that are, well, tray mount, gas amount, it's all good as long as the bottom out, as long as the bottom out isn't too harsh. And like I said on this one, a big part of it, I think, is SA keycaps. I, I'm very partial to them, and this one, and comes out of the gate with them I, and i like them i mean they're they're good thickness um, the, the legends are big uh, and it's colors i like design is different not something that we see too often um and like i said it's very substantial there's the pocket for the rgb oh man that's nice it even has the model number get it out
pretty tight pocket, but I gotta say, I do appreciate the fact that they actually have the model number on here. So if that gets lost and I come across it, I know exactly what keyboard it goes to. I'm not gonna have to go hunting down and testing dongles with different keyboards that don't have it nearby. Um, and I've got a box of dongles that I just basically put a piece of masking tape on there and wrote what the model numbers were so that I know what, you know, when they don't have pockets or anything to them, it's hard to keep track of these things. Because, I mean, there's a USB dongle for everything. I will say the pocket is a bit fussy. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to get this back in here. It was actually pretty hard to get out. Let me see if it'll work this way. Yeah, the way this is built, you kind of have to hook in there, and it's very tight. Um, it feels just like a pressure fit. The reason I'm just, like, on the fence is because, I mean, there's design to this keyboard. There was a, a lot of thought put into this, and and I, I like it. I mean, I like the substantiality of it. I definitely want to come back, do a couple things to it, like add a tape mod, add a PE foam mod, probably do, well, do PE foam mod. I'd like to do a pet mod, a Tempest tape mod. There's quite a few things I'd like to do to this. It's just that in the market today, I mean, a steel plate keyboard, don't get me wrong, there's still a place for them. But why would you spend all this time and design on something that's pretty cool looking? Um, you know, they went well with the keycaps. Like I said, they're either SA or ASA. I, w I wasn't able to find anything direct about them or i wasn't able to actually confirm what they are but they're definitely in the sa family um have really bright leds uh the switches even though they're babs key move they appear to be gainer on so they're custom gainer on switches or versions of their switches especially with the uh, light diffuser which you know, really does seem to make a bit of a difference here i mean that's uh that's a pretty bright especially going through that diffuser because it has patterns and angles to make the light bounce off each other or bounce around before it comes out and shoots out so it makes it much brighter i actually like a lot how it sounds it's somewhat muted and that's something that i can't usually say with a steel keyboard It definitely sounds like a steel keyboard. It sounds stiff, but like I said, I mean, for me, this is... I mean, I, I, I like it. I like the feel of it. Like I said, I'm, I'm probably going or feeling or in my head that it's soft because the, to me, the SA keycap profile is just one that I enjoy. <laughs> and so I think that's my where my softness might be coming from. But I'm so used to steel keyboards because, or so used to tray mounted keyboards because basically that's what I've been typing on most of my life. I mean, gasket mounts, have, um, they haven't even been around a decade, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken. I think they were 2017, 2018 when they first came out. But if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments below. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I like this keyboard. Do I think the price is fair? I, I, I can't, I can't really think or say that the price is fair. I mean, I don't think it's overly priced, but I think it is priced higher than it should be, um, because it has a steel plate and it's train mounted. Now this keyboard with a gasket mounting and a PC plate or hack, give me an aluminum plate. Give me, you know, a different material, even FR4 on a gasket mount. Then I would say, yes, not only could you ask what you're asking for, maybe even a little bit more. I'd, I'd say 99 bucks. I think this would be a fair deal because it is a very substantial keyboard. It has a nice design. It comes well equipped with some nice keycaps. And even though they're gator on, red switches they seem to be pre-lubed they could be the pro variant um they feel just fine uh, so you're getting a pretty decent deal at that point but 85 dollars for a keyboard that looks really cool but doesn't have 
gasket mounting or different. I mean, top mount, something different and a different material. I mean, a steel plate on such a nice keyboard. It's like, why? Why? So, I mean, as always, I do hope that Key Move takes my criticism in good faith and knowing that I'm just, I'm being honest because, I mean, that's what I, I can already read the comments in my head of how people are going to be like, ah, too bad it's trying not, too bad it's a steel plate. Um, I know some key crowns that, uh, the Q series, I don't know why they come with steel plates, gasket mounted, but it's a steel plate. Like, what are you doing? I'm paying this much for an aluminum keyboard and you put in the steel plate. So it just, it's one thing that just would have to change. I, I do like the retro of it. I do like the lights. But, I mean, if this keyboard was more like $45, $49, I'd be like, oh, yeah, you're getting pretty pretty good keyboard for the price. I mean, it is three mode. It's a TKL. Um, it's fully loaded. You want to change out the switches, go ahead. But, I mean, this keycap set, it's perfect for it, in my opinion. Um, it just matches so well with the blue, um, contrast with the gray and the white. It is a nice looking keyboard. So, I mean, if you got you got the money to spend and it, and you like it, I mean, I'd say get it because I I definitely like it. I like how heavy it feels, and I definitely like how it looks. Just the specs. Today we took a look at the Key Move 1980 series K87 a three mode TKL. They come with Keymove branded Gayron switches, which are pre-lubed, SA double shot PVT Apollo keycaps with side legends for the extra functionality, north facing three and five pin hot swap PCB with no compatibility with screw and stabilizer, a tray mounted steel plate, front and side left case RGB. It has a very interesting design and is aiming for a retro look. It has a 4,000 milliamp replaceable battery and comes weighing in at 1,304 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 26 millimeters while the back sits at 29 millimeters, providing for a default angle of 4 degrees. Raising the middle set of feet will take the back up to 35 millimeters, changing the angle of typing to 7 degrees. Raising the final set of feet will raise the back up to 39 millimeters and a 9 degree typing angle. This keyboard manufacturer retail price of $89.99 on keymove.com. If I was wrong about the price, I don't know why I was thinking $85.99. It's $89.99. It's a $95.99 depending on which switches you pick. $90 bucks for this keyboard. Like I said, while it's nice... I mean, it's not all about looks, and it's not all about sound. It's the whole package. How does it feel? And like I said, I mean, for me, I'm so accustomed to tray mount that keyboards are a little too flexy for me, and I have a couple. They're just, it's like my hands almost sink into the keyboard. That's just too much. But I do like a sight, a soft bounce, a flex to it, and most people especially if they've been in the hobby for any amount of time um, and have both that like have a gasket mount keyboard and a tray mount keyboard and com compare most of the people are going to pick the gasket mount and in today's market that is quite competitive i mean the features that we're getting the type of keyboards that we're getting for the prices that we're getting and in stock is it's kind of almost like the renaissance of the hobby right now so while yes, this has nice design language, has good keycaps, good stabilizers, um, Gateron branded switches instead of going with no name or you know something cheaper, having a replaceable battery, which is a feature you don't see very often at all, um, and having you know like I said the design that is muted yet you know stands out. It's just that in my mind the price tag and the product considering the current marketplace 
it's hard for me to justify it because it's a steel plate. I mean, even if it was, you know, a different plate frame mounted, I mean, maybe. But, I mean, a top mount, a gasket sandwich mount, an O-ring mount, I mean, whatever. Something. But most people are going to be like... I've tried other keyboards and they feel so much softer. Why does this one feel so hard? It's a tray mounted steel plate. Now don't get me wrong, they did a good job with it. It doesn't sound bad. I mean, there's no pinging in it. Actually, it's it's a little bit muted. It's not as loud as a steel plate keyboard usually would be. But it's just missing that little bit of bounce that softness to it so while it's a nice keyboard i think the price tag just kind of says mm, if it was more like half the price i think it's in a much better category but at the price it's at right now it's hard for me to justify i, mean, I like it don't get me wrong i'm looking at it and i like it uh but it just needs to be better priced anyway um, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock salad test of the K87 from Keymove 1980 series. Um, Gatoron Reds, I'm thinking that they're pro since they're pre Um, But they are definitely different because of that diffuser that they have. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. And if you have any questions or comments or any ideas for it for when I come back to it, please leave them down in the comments below. A like and subscribe is truly appreciated. I'm aiming for 5,000. I'm almost there. I did never, could have never thought I would get this many uh, people watching my videos. And I appreciate each and every one of you. So until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.